Lek Coaster Legendia is considered by many to be Vacoma's magnum opus. I went in with sky high expectations and Lek Coaster met them. This is the lone Bermuda Blitz model that has been built thus far and I'm stunned there aren't more. Lek Coaster is easily the star attraction at this Polish park, but this well rounded attraction also is a case as one of the best coasters in the world for positive G's. Lek Coaster is a grey out machine. And in this video, I will explain why this coaster is as good as its reputation suggests. In the mid 2010s, Vacoma's reputation performed a complete 180 amongst coaster enthusiasts. This Dutch manufacturer was often criticized for cloning rough and or lackluster coasters, but they had two major developments that triggered a new age for the company. First, Vacoma dramatically improved their track manufacturing capabilities. The days of rough Vacomas are gone. Their new rides are smooth as glass. Second, Vacoma hired an innovative designer in Benjamin Blomendal. Vacoma was still designing layouts that could be cloned, but their new layouts would be much more dynamic rides, combining fast pacing, inversions, and airtime into one complete package. The first, next generation Vacoma thrill coaster was actually located only an hour away from Legendia at the newly opened Energylandia. Formula opened in 2016, and this was a short but sweet coaster. I have a separate review going into more detail, but Formula showed what new Vacoma was capable of. And just one year later, they built something far more extreme at Legendia and Lek Coaster. This Bermuda Blitz model would forego the launch. Instead, Lek Coaster stands 131 feet, or 40 meters tall, and it features a crazy, twisting, beyond vertical drop. Beyond vertical drops are always imposing, but adding a twist takes it to an all new level. The black paint scheme looks menacing, and I love this coaster's placement on the back edge of the lagoon. The ride is perfectly centered with the park's main street, and you can get some amazing vantage points of this coaster, no matter where you are in the park. Then when you get close to this beast, there are pathways going under and around it. Beyond the coaster itself looking great, the area around the attraction is very well landscaped and the coaster has some light theming. The queue line and station are housed in a themed building. Now I believe there's supposed to be a pre-show, but unfortunately it's not being used the day I visited. So I didn't quite get the background on this coaster's story and theming, but from what I understand it involves the history of Poland and birds. Once you reach the station, you will find a train seating 20 riders across 5 cars. The coaster is Vacoma's vest restraints. While they are more restrictive than the restraints at Intamin's newest looping coasters, they're still very comfortable, and the straps have some give to them so they don't inhibit the airtime much at all. The park owns two trains, but only one was in use on the summer weekend day I visited, and that seems suitable given the crowd levels. The ride was a complete walk-on for the first hour. In fact, there were so few people riding Lek Coaster initially, that the operators were deliberately waiting 10-15 to 15 minutes in between dispatches hoping more people would show up. Once Lek Coaster formed a line by the afternoon, it was posting roughly a 20 minute wait at its peak. The operations went from deliberately glacial to pretty fast. I ended up splurging for the unlimited fast pass since it was only 15 US dollars and it got me on the next train each time. This allowed me to marathon this coaster and it was a pretty demanding coaster to ride given the forces it exerts. In terms of seat selection, I like the back row the best. Most elements rode identically regardless of where you sat, but Let Coaster's drop is downright magical in that back car. Once dispatched, you head towards the surprisingly steep lift hill. It starts slow, but it rapidly picks up the pace. This leads to the train being absolutely thrown over the first drop. The ridiculously steep angle, combined with a twist, results in a powerful combination of great ejector airtime and violent laterals simultaneously. The drop reminded me of Exhibition G-Force. Towards the front, you won't get the same laterals, but you will still get some floater airtime because of how extreme that angle of descent is. But again, you want to experience this drop in the back. That is the best spot to experience one of the world's best drops. The pullout charges through some rock work, but I'm going to be honest, I don't recall seeing that on any of my rides. That is because I always lost my vision. I was always graying out in this pullout through the entirety of the dive loop. 
This is one of the strongest and most sustained grayouts I've ever experienced. It's about on par with the one in Intimidator 305. The pullout from the drop is shockingly tight, and I believe this is where the coaster pulls its maximum g-force of 4.8. That is an impressive figure on its own, but the fact that Let Coaster sustains it through the following inversion, and that inversion's pullout, is what makes it special. And spoiler alert, this is not the last gray out. My vision would return midway through the supersized S-Hill that follows. It's a similar sensation to Intimidator 305 when your vision returns on the second hill. And if you've never experienced airtime while graying out or returning from a gray out, it is a funky sensation. Everything feels fuzzy, and the weightlessness is super disorienting. And that's especially the case here because the S-Hill gives strong airtime too. It's good ejector airtime throughout the whole train. That's followed by another forceful low turn that nearly caused me to see some gray again. You then fly over a giant camelback. This hill has a super sharp crest, and it delivers sustained airtime in all rows. Those up front get strong floater airtime, while those in the back get decent ejector airtime. Instead of dropping back down to the ground, you instead level off early, and then you charge through the station. But unlike those station flybys and GCIs that are simple straight track, Vacoma took a page from Intamin's playbook and placed an inversion above the load platform. It really gets you hyped up for your ride while waiting in the station, and it's downright crazy on ride. The element starts like a flat inline twist before twisting downwards like a traditional corkscrew. Whatever this maneuver may be called it is fantastic. You have so much speed through it and you are abruptly whipped 360 degrees, and it is extremely disorienting too from the near misses with the station building. There is not much clearance here. Let Coaster then returns to the positive G's. The pullout from the corkscrew pulls some intense positive G's, and they're sustained through the following overbank that's super compact. This was another section on the ride where I'd get a sustained gray out each time. After another high speed turn, I'd regained my vision and was treated to an awesome bunny hill. This element offered some great ejector airtime no matter where you sat. And again, I need to emphasize how weird it is to get airtime like this while immediately coming off a gray out. The bunny hill shoots under the brake run in one of the few near misses you can actually appreciate before ripping through the ride's third and final inversion, a corkscrew. This one is taken fast. It's pretty snappy and even offers some laterals. The corkscrew then transitions into another sharp turn that had me seeing gray on each ride without fail. You then coast over this off-axis hill. And this is the one element that was a relative dud. It did nothing up front and only offered a tiny bit of weak floater airtime in the back. These off-axis hills are the one element Vacoma has not yet perfected on their new designs. Let Coaster then cruises around a 270 degree upwards helix that pulls some good positive G's because of how compact it is. I I'd started to see gray on half my rides. The exit from the helix is this sweet S hill that gives a good pop of ejector airtime that's extremely disorienting if you manage to lose your vision on that prior helix. After another low, tight, and forceful turn that consistently had me seeing gray, Let Coaster shot into the brake run, giving those up front a little bit of floater airtime and at this point I always felt fuzzy and dizzy once the 2,979 feet or 908 meters of track ended. That's because of how many positive G's I experienced and the amount of gray outs. It's not uncommon for me to see gray on a lot of coasters. Vertical loops and tight pullouts usually do it for me. But most rides only offer the sensation once. Let Coaster did a whopping six times, at least. There were two of the longest and most sustained gray outs I've ever had in any coaster, plus four other turns that had me seeing gray to a lesser extent. The amount of positive G's this coaster pulls is crazy. It is without a doubt one of the most intense coasters I've ever ridden. And I wonder if this is why there aren't more Bermuda Blitz coasters out there. Even their new Shockwave coaster in Abyssus at Energylandia did not pull positive G's like this. So what would I rate Lek Coaster? I would give this coaster a perfect 10 out of 10. This coaster is phenomenal. The layout and pacing are near perfect. Really, the only weak moment in the entire experience is that aforementioned off-axis hill. Every other element and transition is incredible. 
The way Leck Coaster transitions between ejector airtime, crushing positive Gs, and snappy inversions is a balance few coasters have ever been able to attain. Leck Coaster raced similarly to Intimidator 305 for me. Both rides feel like they'll kill you with the positive Gs. Leck Coaster is a borderline top 25 steel coaster for me because of its sheer intensity and varied layout. I really hope something like this comes to America in the future. So those are my thoughts on Leck Coaster, the awesome Bermuda Blitz coaster at Legendia. What are your thoughts on this forceful coaster? Are you excited for the future of Acoma? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.